I'd like to take a moment and invite you to reflect on what you see in your mind when you think of this word, scientist. By a show of hands, how many of you saw goggles? How about somebody wearing a lab coat? Maybe somebody with some crazy hair? All right. How many of you also saw someone like this? How many of you also somehow saw someone who was not white and male? So I'd like to invite you to take a moment and reflect on what you may have noticed, either subconsciously or consciously, about me. You may have noticed that I am relatively young, female, maybe a little nervous. Uh, but the first thing that you thought about me was likely not scientist, right? Why is that? I posit that there are two major reasons that the STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics workforce that we imagine or see in real life is not as diverse as the rest of our population. One is a lack of access to diverse mentors and role models for young STEM students. And two is the lack of real world professional experiences in STEM early on in students' educational pursuits. To explore this more, I'd like to take you back to the formative years in my science education, and it may help explain some of your mental representations as well. We're going back to my very first science class, seventh grade, 1997. In 1997, women only represented 23% of the science and engineering workforce. That same workforce only consisted of 18% non-white workers. So, as you might imagine, I too only ever saw scientists as both white and male. And I was shown this over and over and over again. I had exactly zero science teachers in junior high and high school that were female and or minority. Zero. My very first woman teacher, mother, scientist, mentor, I met my first year in teaching. Birgit Machineau, who I feel I owe my whole life to, taught me to say yes to every opportunity. One opportunity was a 240-hour summer internship at the USDA Arid Land Agricultural Research Center. This internship changed my life. I spent 240 hours studying microbial ecology and growth patterns in reclaimed water under Dr. Jeannie McLean. I learned so much from the experience itself that had nothing to do with microbial ecology. I got to work with strong, intelligent women that navigated their way through an organization that was, shall we say, not very much like them. Jeannie turned me on to the field of sustainability, a field in which I recently finished my PhD. Without mentors like Birgit, like Jeannie, and others, I would not be standing here before you today. They showed me it was possible. Before them, imagining myself as a 30-something PhD biology professor mother was like trying to design a spacesuit for an alien species that has not yet been discovered. <laughs> Literally impossible. I don't even remember having the dream about being here because it was so far out of the realm of possibility. And if it was this hard for me to get here, imagine how impossible it might feel for young students of color to envision themselves in my shoes. Because of this, it has become my passion to help students of diverse backgrounds navigate their way into careers in STEM, changing the face of science, one student at a time. That USDA National Institutes of Food and Agriculture funded grant program that changed the course of my career was run by a wonderful man named Marshall Logvin. He's since retired and in his retirement, he's mentored me in the grant writing and coordinating process. I'm now the principal investigator of a USDA National Institutes of Food and Agriculture Hispanic Serving Institutions grant called Project Puente that strives to solve the two problems I presented to you at the beginning of this talk. The lack of access to diverse uh, role models and, and uh, mentors for young STEM students and the lack of real-world professional experiences in STEM for them early in their educational pursuits. You see, the traditional pipeline model looks something like this. Uh, <laughs> in high school, go into college, 
in the last semester of college, maybe you're lucky enough to get an internship, and then you enter into your career. The problem is, this is a really leaky pipeline. 49% of bachelor's degree pursuing STEM students and 69% of associate's degree pursuing STEM students ultimately do not end up in a career in STEM. If we want to increase persistence in STEM, we have to change the way that students experience STEM throughout their educational careers. The Project Puente model flips that original script entirely and looks something like this. You're in high school, have an internship while you're in high school. Then go to college, have an internship in the first two years of college. Then continue working in the field or enter the career upon graduation. In this model, students see early on that they do not have to be geniuses to pursue a career in STEM. They see that characteristics that they already have, such as passion, patience, and attention to detail, are what makes someone successful in a lab. They see the science applied, giving them the motivation to understand and better work through those hard classes they may encounter in their college career. Most importantly, they see it's possible. Here's what's really cool. We're making these experiences accessible to rural students. Right here in Pinal County, our rural county squished somewhere between the metropolis of Phoenix and the city of Tucson, there's some major science going on here. We may not have the quantity of biotech companies, biomedical research centers, or engineering firms that our neighboring counties have, but the science that is done here impacts the whole nation. Don't know what I'm talking about? What if I told you the scientists right here in Pinal County were using robotics, biotechnology, engineering, and more to figure out the best ways to feed, clothe, and otherwise meet the needs of our growing population? Researchers are working on the best ways to get more crop out of less space, using less water, less fertilizer, less pesticides, all while optimizing the plants for the ever-changing climate here in Arizona. Our wonderful partners, such as the University of Arizona Maricopa Agricultural Center, the USDA Air and Land Agricultural Research Center, and the City of Phoenix Rio Salado Habitat Restoration Area are giving students real-world, locally relevant, professional STEM internships throughout their educational pursuits, and we are placing them with a diverse set of mentors that better enables them to envision themselves in this line of work. We are not only changing students' perceptions of themselves and improving their self-efficacy in pursuing science, we are changing their perception of science to include the important work of agriculture here in Pinal County and across the world. Mentors like environmental microbiologist Dr. Chana Rock, hydraulic engineer Dr. Eduardo Batista, and park ranger Koi Mangan give students real-world opportunities to solve real-world problems and open their minds to the possibilities that lay before them. They get to explore how they can integrate their desire to help others and their interest in STEM, and they end up figuring out that agriculture research is a great place to do just that. To date, we've placed over 100 students in these meaningful internship experiences. They walk away with experience, a professional network, confidence, a new perspective, and sometimes a job. We are building the pipeline that will fuel the changing face of science and agriculture in this country. So how can you help? Well, if you're a student, get involved. Ask your teachers about these experiences. Take the risk of trying something new. All you need is passion, curiosity, and a desire to work to the best of your ability. We'll take it from there. Are you a teacher or a professor? Use this model. Get your students in these experiences early on in their educational careers. Forge partnerships with local companies and organizations. Tell them what you know your students are capable of if just given the opportunity. Figure out ways that these organizations can benefit from this partnership. It can and should always be a two-way relationship. Are you a business owner? 
think about hosting a college or high school intern, someone that may not have a whole lot of training, but is so willing to learn. They will learn something from you, and I promise you will learn something from them as well. Not a teacher or a business owner? Help us change the narrative. Have conversations about where your food and clothing come from and how important agriculture is to the very fabric of our nation. <laughs> also, encourage all students, but especially female and minority students, to pursue a career in STEM. It's growing faster than other fields, and STEM workers earn an average of 25% more per year. Finally, and this is for all of you, support publicly funded grant programs. Government-funded organizations like the National Science Foundation and the National, USDA National Institutes of Food and Agriculture have relatively small but important line-item budgets that give grants to institutions like mine to increase the diversity of the next generation workforce. With your support, the child born tomorrow might have science teachers that are as diverse as her community. She might have mentors that help her see herself in a STEM career, might persist through a STEM degree, might not become a dropout statistic. She might be a mentor herself someday, and maybe what she sees when she hears the word scientist might look a little more inclusive. Thank you. <laughs>